Oh yeah. Now just another little interim video, something in between the projects and bits and pieces that is quite important. It's come to light recently when we're watching people's videos. We watch other people's videos as well. We do get the time, rarely. And this is about prepping your bike for a tour. This is the time of year when many people have sat looking at their bikes in the garage for nine months, right over the cold period, and they want to go and tour around the Road of Bones, or they want to go and tour around Europe, and they're planning these 5,000 mile trips, which is great. And in all seriousness, our very good friend, Mr. Peachy, is coming up all the way from Gibraltar to come to the Bulldog Bash, and that's, I think, a 3,000 mile round trip. So this is relevant. Now, it's about preparing for a touring trip. And I'm talking about the kit that you take, how many first aid bandages, how many bars of Kendall mint cake, how many sat nav batteries, that's all down to you. I'm not getting involved in that. I want to focus on the bike because that's what we do. The most important thing, before you worry about what kit you take and how many luggage panniers you've got or what route you're gonna take or how many hotels you're gonna book or whether you can speak French or not, it's all irrelevant if your bike lets you down. You look a bit of a cock in the middle of nowhere with your chain hanging loose because you didn't even take a second look at it when you left home. Okay, so this is about quite simply looking at your bike, three main fundamental consumable items that you really need to pay close attention to. And it is ever so simple, common sense. All right, so stick around, stay tuned, I'll show you the first one right now. Right, one, number one, tyres. Obviously, if you're planning a four or five thousand mile trip, consider how long your tyres have got left in them. Buy yourself a tyre depth gauge, they're a few pounds. Alternatively, just use your common sense, you've got wear bars they give you a millimetre. If you're planning, a, you should know roughly from a tyre how many miles you're gonna get. On most bikes, between three and 5,000 miles out of the rear and between five and 8,000 miles out of the front. Obviously it varies. Obviously I'm gonna get loads of comments in the oh, I got 12 out of mine and I only got 1,500 out of mine. Well, yes, of course. You're gonna get variances, but you know your bike, your riding, and how your compound of tyres wear. It's as simple as that. So if you know you only usually get 5,000 miles out of a tyre, and you've done three on it so far, you've only got two left. In fact, you've only really got 1,500 left, haven't you? Because you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be squeezing that last 500 out when you're the other side of France. Also, it gives you scope to expand your journey, to expand your tour, and it gives you flexibility to do what you want. So make sure you've got at least enough mileage plus 1,000 in your tyre. And that's easy enough to do, it really is. You're gonna plan your trip, you're gonna know roughly how many miles it is, and if in doubt, and you've got, like Penny's got here, a tyre that's only sort of eight months old, it's done, I don't know, about two, 3,000 miles. That's fine, it's a good tire. But if we were planning a 5,000 mile trip, I would put a new one on that, a brand new one. It doesn't matter if you put this one back on again when that new one's worn out. So go and do your 5,000 mile tour, come back. Even if it's not worn out, get the last duds out of it, go and see the tire fitter and put that one back on. You're not losing anything if you put a new tire on. And it goes to the front as well. I would always suggest you change the tires as a pair only really because the age of those tyres is then different if you've, you've mixed them up, and I just don't like that. If you're planning a trip around Europe or a long touring trip, then obviously you've got the money to afford it, which means you shouldn't be skimping on things like tyres. They are your only contact with the planet, simple as that. So that's your tyres. Make sure you've got enough life in them to get you home. Yes, carry puncture kits. Yes, make sure you've got that. You might want to put that gel stuff in. You might want to, there's all kinds of other things, but all I'm talking about today is the amount of people I see who go touring and have to find somewhere in the middle of the Ukraine that sells tires on a Sunday. Come on, think ahead, it's simple as that. Okay, let's get on number two. Number two, brake pads. Same principle as the tires. Your brake pads, again, I've heard people in the middle of Europe with metal brake pads, metal to metal, trying to find themselves a way of getting some more. You can't rely on it when you're outside of the UK or your home area, you're in a foreign country, you can't rely on it. So again, with brake pads, unless they're almost new, if you look in here, simple visual check, you've got all that nice pad material, that's fine. Also, if you service, maintain your bike, even if you don't physically service it yourself, if you, even if you take it to a dealer or a shop to be serviced, you should know how old those brake pads are. If you've bought a second hand bike and you don't know, then try going through the service history, because quite often you'll find if you've got a big pile of receipts, as I got with the Tiger recently, you can go through them and you can find the receipt for the brake pads, and you can look how many miles ago it was. Often you might find it's longer than you think. So again, brake pads, if you have to put new ones in, you're not sure, if in doubt, swap them out. That's kind of a little bit of a phrase I hear quite a lot. If in doubt, swap them out. Stick some new ones in, keep the old ones if they've got a load of meat on them, and use them up later on when you've got more access to ready repairs. Okay, and the third and final one. I'll right, finally, you. number three. Th number three is chain sprockets. It ain't hard, is it? It's the same as the other two. Make sure you've got enough life in your chain sprockets to get you through that 
planned distance that you intend to tour. Obviously, to check a chain, you grab it on the back of the sprocket and you pull it off the sprocket. And what you're looking for is for that chain not to come off the back of the sprocket any more than it takes to get a pencil in the gap. If you can get a pencil in that gap, that chain's knackered. It doesn't matter how far back the wheel's adjusted or how good it looks, it's irrelevant. If that sprocket is allowing the chain to move free of it, then it needs replacing. And it really, if you're planning a tour thousands of miles, you should have enough money to put 100 pound chain sprockets on the bike. You don't even have to pay that much. You can get them for half that if you really buy budget stuff. But again, it's your bike, it's your safety. It's as simple as that. Obviously clean your chain before you go. There's other preparations and I'm not gonna go into too much detail on it. I just wanted to touch on these three things because I see very well known, very prolific vloggers, very famous people on the internet who seem to see, find themselves stranded in the middle of nowhere with the most ridiculous oversights of, er of errors of judgment. Just think about it, folks. It's your bike, it's your safety. And places like France, August, they shut down. There's nothing open anywhere. It's like a video set of survivors. It's like there's no one around. Even ice cream shops are shut. Nothing. You won't get anything for your bikes. And that is where you'll end up stranded with this catastrophic nightmare of getting your bike home. Recovery systems, recovery companies. Honestly, why bother? Preparation is what it's all about. Remember what the old army phrase goes, preparation prevents piss poor performance. It's as simple as that. And that brings us to one more final thing. What you can do is go around your bike with a pre-MOT check. You could even go and get it re-MOT'd. What's wrong with that? 30 pounds, take it to an MOT station. You might have nine months left, doesn't matter. Give it the inspection. Get that inspected for the peace of mind. And the final thing that you could do, I believe is a really, really, really sound investment, is to, if you don't do your own servicing, take your bike for a service. What's wrong with taking it to a garage that you trust, not necessarily the main dealer, somewhere that you trust and are happy with, and get that bike serviced. Give it a major service. Tell them, contact, communication with the mechanic. Say, look mate, I'm going a 5,000 mile touring trip. I want this bike absolutely reliable. What do you reckon? They'll go over that bike in a way that your mind won't think. They're technicians, they do it every day. They know how long things last. They might look at a pivot on a swing arm and say the spring's gone in that and that issue fixed. That's the kind of thing, preparation of the bike before you go. So I only really wanted to touch on those three main points, the tires, the chain, the sprockets, and the brake pads, because they're the three things that seem to leave people stranded the most. I hope that helps. If you're gonna go touring this year, enjoy yourself, have a great time. Maybe stick a video up and show us it. Let's see how you get on. Okay, take it easy, ride safe, see you next time.